Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 16 of the chapter States of Matter. Let us now start solving some problems based on ideal gas equation which are given in your NCRT textbook exercise. This is question 5.3 from your NCRT text exercise from class 11 chemistry textbook. The question is using the equation of state PV is equal to NRT show that at a given temperature at a given temperature the density of a gas is proportional to gas pressure P. Now we have been given PV is equal to NRT is our equation of state that is the ideal gas equation. Right? The number of moles if you want to convert it into density what is density? D density is mass per unit volume and what is number of moles? Number of moles is mass of a given gas divided by the molar mass. So if we put mass here somehow, volume we already have, we would be able to get an expression for density. We've already done this in the theory in the uh, video number 15, sorry 14, where I explained the ideal gas equation to you. So now let us do that. PV therefore is equal to the mass given upon molar mass of the gas into RT, right? PV is mass over molar mass. Now, what would density be? Pressure would be equal to mass upon volume into RT. I'm just shifting the M here, upon M. Do you see? It's basically the same thing. It is MRT over M small m rt over m so what i've done i brought the volume and i placed it under the m so that i can get the density here so now we get the pressure is equal to density into rt upon m right now r is the universal gas constant t is a temperature and he says that show that at a given temperature which means temperature is constant and the molar mass of any uh, gas or any substance for that matter is constant. So RT upon M if you really look at this is constant. Right? So since RT upon M is constant P you can write this as P is equal to KD where K stands for RT upon M and K is a constant. Right? You can say this that P is equal to KD where K which is constant can be taken as RT upon M which is constant. If you now want to remove the constant of proportionality and bring in the sign of proportionality then you could say since this is constant the pressure would depend on D. So we from this we understand that pressure is directly proportional to D. If in this equation D were in the denominator then we would have said that pressure is inversely proportional to density and it would have been P is proportional to 1 upon D. But since it is directly proportional, so this shows us that pressure and density, if pressure rises, density rises and if pressure goes down, density goes down. So what was our question? That using the equation of state PV is equal to NRT, show that at a given temperature, the temperature is constant, density of a gas is proportional to its gas pressure. That is what we have proved now. Okay, so let us, let us now solve the next question. This is question 5.4 from your NCRT textbook exercise. The question reads, at 0 degrees Celsius, the density of a certain oxide of a gas at 2 bar, density at 2 bar, 2 bar means is the pressure, is the same as that of dinitrogen at 5 bar. It means the temperature is constant and both of these gases, they have the same density. What is the molecular mass of the oxide? Again, it is not a direct application of PV is equal to NRT. We've introduced the idea of density. And now we are not talking of one gas, we are talking of two gases. And we say that the densities of two gases are equal under this uh, formula, that is this equation. So. We are now interested, we will we'll start the question with the same when you solve it, that PV is equal to NRT and we know that P, we, these four steps would be the same, that P is equal to DRT by M. 
So I'll take it from here that we know that P is equal to DRT by M. So what is density? Therefore, density would be equal to density V, or you could even start it from here. The density is equal to PM upon RT, right? Density would be equal to density is P m goes up here and the rt come down here all right these are the two densities that will be available to us right we have and we've been told that d1 is equal to d2 we've also been told that t is zero degree celsius and it is zero degree celsius for both the gases therefore what do we understand here from this expression for this question that r is constant and t is also constant and we've also been told that the density of the first gas is equal to the density of dinitrogen. Let us say that the first gas is D1 and D2, if D1 is the first gas, then, or let me say, yes, we've been told that D1 would be equal to P1M1 upon RT. And what would D2 be? D2 is nitrogen. It would be equal to P2 M2 upon RT because R and T are the same. So there is no need of writing T1 and T2 and R is the same for both. Therefore, since RT and RT are constant, we've been told that D1 is equal to D2. Right? So let us substitute this. D1 is P1 M1 upon RT should be equal to P2 M2 upon RT. Now, if you have RT, RT on both the sides, don't they get cancelled out? You're dividing both sides of an equation by RT. So, RT and RT get cancelled. You're left with P1M1 is equal to P2M2. Now, let us see what are P1, what is M1, what is P2, what, are, what is M2? D2 is equal to P2M2. I'm just rewriting this upon RT to make space for my uh, question. So, now we want to know what is P1. P1 given to us is 2 bar, right? What is P2? P2 given to us is 5 bar, right? And what's the other part? Molar mass. We know that molar mass of gas 1 is what we have to find out. And M2 is the molar mass of nitrogen. Nitrogen has a molar mass of 28 grams per mole, right? So that's the molar mass of nitrogen. Let us substitute the values. We are looking for M1. If we are looking for M1, therefore M1 would be equal to P2 M2 upon P1. Substitute the values in this. P2 M2 upon P1. P2 is 5 bar into M2. What is M2? 28 grams per mole and you have to divide it by 2 bar. Cancel out the units. You're looking for mass, molar mass. Your unit should be grams per mole. And you, are, you should get your answer in grams per mole, which means you've plugged in the right values. This will come to be equal to 70 grams per mole. So this was the molar mass of the gas, or that is the oxide of the gas that you had taken. Let us now solve one more numerical problem. This is question 5.5 of your exercise. The question reads that the pressure of one gram of an ideal gas at 27 degrees Celsius is found to be 2 bar. One gram of an ideal gas at 27 degrees Celsius, temperature is given, mass is given. If mass is given, it means when we use the ideal gas equation, PV is equal to nRT. For N, we will be using M over M because this is small m that's given and capital M is the molecular mass. So anyway, let's proceed. This, you know, these are little hints that you can just by reading the question, you can get an idea of what, uh, which equation or which version of the equation would you be expected to use. So the pressure of one gram of ideal gas at 27 degrees Celsius is found to be two bars when two grams of another ideal gas is added to the flask at the same temperature. Now, same temperature. It means temperature is constant is added to the flask this tells you that volume is constant you know the language of the question will give you hints v is constant t is constant right so when two grams of another ideal gas is added to the flask at the same temperature 
the pressure becomes three bar. Now, the pressure when we had one gas was two bar. When you added the second gas to it, it became three bar. What does it mean? It means that when you added the second gas, the contribution of the second gas in pressure was only of one bar because initially we had two bars and the final pressure becomes three bars. Again, come back to that example that I gave you of children in the playground. One classroom goes down into the playground and the children are playing and they are exerting pressure. They're making noise. Let us say the noise is pressure. If two classes go into the playground and all the children are playing of two classes, the second class who went in, they will produce their own noise, which would be their own pressure. So now the noise that you will hear from the, uh, from the playground would be the combined noise of two classes, that is two gases A and B. So the total noise is actually the sum of the noises of the two uh, classes. So you can say the pressure of one, the molecules of one gas, and when you add the second gas, the total pressure is actually a sum of the two. Therefore, what is the pressure of the second gas, the contribution of the second gas? It is three minus two, which is only one bar. So the second gas, when you add it, the pressure increased by one bar. The total pressure becomes three bar. Now, these are things that we have understood just by reading the question. Then the question is that find a relationship between their molecular masses. Molecular mass is capital M. Small m's are given to us. Capital M had to be found out. Uh, so, or, or a relationship between them has to be derived. So we'll be using the ideal gas equation. And which version of the ideal gas equation will be used? Where we, instead of number of moles, we write small m and capital M. So we know that PV is equal to nRT, right? And if I convert the N to M over M, PV would become equal to M, small m over capital M, R, T. Let us now write this equation for the two gases. Let the first gas be 1 and the second gas be 2. So what would the equation be for gas 1? For gas 1, for the first ideal gas, for first gas, P1 volume is the same. Do you see? Because we are adding the second gas to the same jar, therefore the volume is constant, so we need not write V1 because it's not variable. P1V is equal to the mass of given mass was 1 gram M1 upon the molar mass of gas 1 into R, which is a constant, which does not change, is the same for all ideal gases. And then the temperature is constant, so I'll write it only as T, not as T1. Similarly, for the second gas now, for the second gas, it would be P2V is equal to M2 upon capital M2 into RT. Am I clear? What did we do? We just put the, given the numbers, we've allotted the values, um, a number to the values to differentiate between the two gases. Now, what do we find in this? V is constant, R and T are constant. So let us put all the constants on one side in both the equations. So what will I, and what, whatever variables we have, let us put them on one side. So we we'll get P1, I'm taking the variables on this side, so M1 goes up here and m small m1 comes down here do you see this i'm bringing all the variables here and the constants will be on the other side so we already have rt and v comes down here do you see this we can rewrite the this equation this way now rewrite the second equation in the same manner we will get p2 m2 upon m2 will also be equal to rt upon v Right? What have we done? We put the constants on one side and we put the variables on one side. And when we do that, what do we realize? That R, T and V are the same for both the gases. Since they are the same for both the gases, if this is equal to R, T and this is also equal to R, T, it means this value is equal to this. Let us equate them. So we say that P1, M1 upon M1 should be equal to P2 M2 upon M2. Now let us see what are these values. What is P1? What is pressure 1? Uh, 2 bar. Okay, let's go by the question. Pressure of 1 gram. So M1 
is one gram okay pressure of one gram at 27 degree we are not concerned with the temperature because that was constant is found to be two bar and molar mass would be m1 right molar mass of gas m1 the value is not given so we just need to find out the relationship between capital m1 and m2 so what is p2 p2 here is the pressure is 3 minus 2 bar which will be equal to 1 bar right and what is m2 small m2 how many grams did we add we added 2 grams so now substitute these values in this equation we will get p1 is 2 bar into what is the molar mass it remains as m1 because the value is not given we are trying to find out the relationship between m1 and m2 these two we are finding the relationship the other values are given to us so upon m1 is 1 gram right is equal to what is p2 p2 is 1 bar into m2 is not known to us so we write m2 and the mass is 2 grams right you see here what do you get from this you have the bar and the bar the units would get cancelled only the values will remain because all of them have the same units on two sides they would all get cancelled so we have 2 into m1 1 into m2 upon 2 upon 1 we can ignore the units now so we have 2 m1 is equal to m2 upon 2 if I want to find out a relationship between m1 and m2 I take the 2 up here this becomes 4 m1 is equal to m2 so what is this is the relationship between the two so what is the relationship that m1 is four times greater than m2 that was our question find a relationship between their molecular masses the molecular mass of the first gas is four times the molecular mass of the second gas so this was your question based on ideal gas equation if the video helped you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry thank you for watching and bye bye for now